In an interactive application, it's common to display the list of users or their icons that are online at the given moment. In this video, we'll take a look at how you can add such feature using the presence feature of Superbase. This is part 3 of creating a Figma clone app using Flutter and Superbase. On top of adding presence feature, we'll be adding some UI components as well to make it more similar to the actual Figma. Let's dive in. Let's go over what we have so far. We can draw circles and rectangles on this blank canvas. We can also move these shapes around and anything that we do within this canvas will be synced in real time with other clients. Now let's get to work. In order to provide a similar UI as the real Figma, let's first add a app bar. We can then bring the three buttons to change the action up here as the leading of this app bar. We can also remove the stack widget around the gesture detector. Let's give the app bar some background color. And we also need to make the leading width bigger so that the three buttons can fit. Let's also make the unselected color of the button white so that it's more visible. Let's check out the UI, and we have an app bar with three buttons at the top. Notice that the cursor position is a bit off, so let's fix it. The issue is that we were using global positions when we should have been using local positions. Change all global positions to local positions, and the cursor position being off is fixed. Now let's move on to adding presence feature into this app. We are going to display the user's icons within the actions of the app bar. Luckily, we already have a handy variable that we could use, user cursors. We could just loop over the user cursors variable and obtain the ID value for each one of them. Since user cursors does not include the user's ID, let's also add the my ID variable as well. Once we have all the online user's IDs, we can map through them and display a UI. Wrapping the circular avatar widget with an align widget with width factor of 0.8 allows us to create this overlapping effect of the icons. Give it some color and text, and let's go check out the UI. Because of the width factor of 0.8, the icons kind of shifted into the right hand side. The fix for this is very easy, we just need to add some spacing on the right. Now it looks perfect. Now let's take a look at how it looks with two users. Because we are currently relying on broadcast events, until the cursor enters the window, the user icon does not show up in the other window. Also, there is no concept of leaving currently. So if I refresh the window on the right, another icon would show up on the left window. Now Superbase real-time presence can help us fix this. We will add presence listeners to our real-time subscription. First we add the on presence join callback. This is called whenever a new user has entered the session. We can extract the new user's ID and add it to the user cursor object. Now presence can detect when a user leaves the session, so we can add a on presence leave callback. We can get the user ID of the user that left, and remove their user cursor object. Lastly, we need to tell what our user ID is to other presence listeners. For this, once we get the subscribed status, we call the track method and give the user ID. Let's go check it out. As I refresh the page on the right, one of the icons disappears on the left and then another one shows up. When I refresh the page on the left, the icon is still kept in sync. Beautiful! That's how you can implement presence feature using Superbase. Now that was the meat of this episode, adding presence feature. But I promised to add some UI components, so let's move on to that. We'll be creating a left panel, a side panel on the left side that contains the list of objects that are currently present within the canvas. Create a stateless widget called left panel. The entire widget will be wrapped with material widget, color the same color as the app bar. Now let's just go add it to our canvas page. Wrap the outermost child of the body with a row. Then wrap the stack widget with an expanded so that it'll just take up whatever space is available. Then add the left panel. Come back to the left panel dot dot file and create a list view. We'll be looping through each of the canvas objects here. So let's create a objects parameter. The item count will be the length of objects. And we're just going to return list tile for the item builder. Now go to canvas page and let's properly pass the canvas object. This objects parameter takes a list of canvas objects. And because we want the new objects to come to the top, we are reversing the order. But why am I getting an error on the canvas objects variable? It turns out I didn't capitalize the O of the objects, so let me fix that. 
Now back to left panel dot dart. Let's display some text within the list tile. In actual Figma, there's default names for each object and users can edit it. But for now, let's just display the runtime type and not worry about editing the object name. Now we should also be able to select the object from the left panel. So let's add a selected object ID parameter and a on object selected callback. Now list tile has a selected property. We can change the color of the list tile if the object is selected. Come back to the canvas page dot dart and add the parameters. Now we don't have a selected object ID property. But instead we have a currently drawing object ID. Let's rename this to selected object ID because I think it makes more sense. For on object selected, we just update the selected object ID. Now let's check out the UI. Notice that we are only seeing one rectangle on the left panel as we draw multiple rectangles. This is due to the default font color. The rest of the rectangle text is there, it's just hard to see. A quick and easy fix is to use dark theme. Then we could explicitly give a white background color to the scaffold. Let's go check out the final UI. As we draw rectangles, we see the rectangle text popping up on the left. If we draw circles, we see circles on the left. We can select different objects and we can see that the selected object is being highlighted. One final issue that I want to fix is this canvas object going beyond the canvas. The fix is pretty simple. Essentially, we just need to wrap the custom pane widget with a clip bar rect. And with this, the shape is properly cropped within the boundary of the canvas. And that's a wrap for this episode. The presence feature is an easy way to add an interactive feel to your application, so be sure to check it out. The next episode of Flutter and Figma clone series will be about storage in Subbase, so be sure to check that one as well. I'll see you around. Bye!